Good job. All right. Good job. Good job. Hi, and welcome to our first coaching video with No Bones About It and Fritzy. So the purpose of our coaching videos is to just give you a sense of the skills we're working on during the week and practical tips that you can be utilizing during your time with the dog. Um, so just as a general recap, this week, Tuesday started off with a lot of nerves, a lot of um, just shut down behavior, which again, I describe as um, avoidance tactics, meaning no eye contact, sort of keeping your head down, um, not engaging at all. Uh, basically sort of just trying to go to another place because that's his coping mechanism. Um, a few times trying to reach out just to, you know, grab his collar or his harness or his leash, a little, you know, a little, you know, air snaps. Um, again, all normal. But by today, significantly better in the car. Um, he's not bothered by the other dogs. He's not really engaging with them yet, but um, but that's okay. When I said baby steps, we can't make this process go faster. Meaning what we need to do when we are working with a, a dog that has behavioral anxiety, things like that, is that we have to constantly work at what we call sub threshold. We need to make sure that we are working at a pace that is, um, that this puppy can can cope and not go into kind of that shutdown mode. So my goal this week is just strictly to like get him comfortable, use a lot of positive voice. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, have him just be around and yeah, we've, we've made some good progress. I mean, he's still not his bouncy, like, you know, happy carefree self, but I mean, the fact that he, he, again, I can see a lot of changes in his behavior in just two days. So I think on a positive note that, um, we're not really even into what we would call sort of that, um, full effect of his meds. So hopefully by the end of next week, you know, we're gonna see even more changes in his relaxation that will allow us to make more progress in the conditioning, in the counter conditioning of his behaviors. Um, one of the things yesterday, because a, a dog that's sort of in a nervous state generally won't take food. Um, they won't, they're just not interested. I mean, just think about if you were like fully anxious about something, you're not, you're, you're, you're not interested in food. You've got an upset tummy, whatever. So yesterday we had a big breakthrough where I went through a bunch of different things to see if he would, um, if he would take anything from me. And we found that he loved his cream cheese. We don't give, give puppies a ton of dairy, but it's, you know, if during the course of a day he has, you know, a couple teaspoons or a tablespoon, it's, it's gonna be fine. So he, uh, he was gobbling up cream cheese. And so what I'm trying to do is just really basic things, like even just sitting on the ground and every time he walks over to me, let him lick a little bit of cream cheese. Um, anytime the dogs come around and there's a little bit of a ruckus, let them lick a little bit of cream cheese. All we're trying to do is pair positive experiences at his pace. So I'm not forcing any issues on him. So let's talk about what I, I want you to do during the week. Um, you know, taking him out and about is not a bad idea, but not overwhelming him. So what does that look like? You know, it, I, I can't say, I can't really give you the best um, or, or I can't judge what he's going to react to in, in different scenarios. But, um, you know, what I can do is tell you what I would want you to do in reaction to some of his behaviors. Okay. So, oh, hi. So there's a difference between positive reinforcement and, um, babying or coddling. 
okay? So dogs are very savvy at figuring this out. And I think this is where you're gonna struggle a little bit because you, you have worked really hard to get him to feel confident and comfortable with you. But in doing so, you've created um, a very coddling environment. And so instead of him gaining uh, the ability to handle certain situations, he just kind of runs and hops in your lap and puts, you know, puts his head down and ignores everything else. So what we've been doing is just using tone of voice, happy, not coddling, not like, oh, you're okay and stroking and things like that. No, that feeds into sort of that, un what's going on here? This is uncomfortable. We use a lot of happy tones of voice, like what a brave boy you are. You are such a good buddy. Um, so I'm gonna put him down and I'm just gonna work on, and this is a, a basic skill that we do to start getting a puppy to want to respond to the word come. We are not using the word come right now. All we're doing is pairing some positive reinforcement for what we call name game. So if I say his name and he looks at me, he's not going to take any food from me right now, but it looks something like this. Fritzy! Yes! Good boy! So anytime, so you can see, even when I touched him, he kind of did a little jumpy away. So I try to, again, I try to work at a pace where he's not going to, um, flinch or do anything that's that's unnerving to him. Um, a lot of times when we're practicing, I'll sit on the ground. So all I want to do is make eye contact something that he gets rewarded for. So let's say I had my cream cheese or a treat. Um, I would say his name. When he looks at me, I'm going to use the word yes in a very happy tone of voice. And then I'm going to offer him something yummy. Okay. So that's what a skill I want you to work on this week. Let's see. Yes, good boy, good boy. So the other thing that I, so name game is simply say your name, look for eye contact, use the word yes, which you're gonna read in your handbook is called a marker word. It marks the exact moment that the dog does what we're looking for. So um, these are all skills that are gonna build his confidence and his willingness to come to you eventually, even when he's uncomfortable. Right now, he has what we call just a complete um, flight response. So when he is uncomfortable, he wants to run. He wants to get away and anything that prevents that he's going to, which is why when he's nervous, if I reach down too quickly and he gets freaked out, he does a little air snap because that in his mind is preventing him from getting away from the thing that is making him uncomfortable. So we're trying to counter condition that response. So we need, again, to work on name game. So it's just Fritzy. Yes, good boy. And then he would get a cookie um, or a little lick of cream cheese. And then the other thing I'm doing is simply just in a really calm way, reaching out, touching him and giving a little cookie. So the cookie stays hidden until I have finished the, the touch. So it's touch, maybe, and then I give him a cookie. Um, maybe grab the back of his harness a little bit give a cookie um, so that we're again in his mind creating a scenario where when I'm going and trying to get to him instead of him having that flight response he's gonna go oh something really good is gonna happen but I am NOT pushing him past his comfort zone so I'm not coming in from top like you know grabbing at him making quick motions I'm simply just trying to get him to understand that, hi buddy, touch, 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 boop, 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 and then giving him a little something, something, okay? Um, so right now, again, I'm not worried about getting him comfortable around other people yet. I'm not worried about I, the housebreaking thing we're gonna get to, but for right now, we're still utilizing the same strategies, which is confinement, unless he's just gone to the bathroom and like you said get him to another area of the house where you can supervise him for quick little visits so even just this like lying down day one he was not comfortable enough he was kind of on alert the whole time and now he'll just kind of chill which is great um and 
the last thing I want to tell you is that I really, I know this is a struggle for you. I know that um, using your crate to you feels like jail for this dog, but absolutely it is his safe place. It is a place where I want you to really work on twice a day during the middle of the day, having him have some crate time. It is also going to force the issue of um, holding it and then you take him out of the crate and he goes out and he goes potty and then he can come back in. It creates longer periods of time where he isn't just peeing whenever he feels like it. Because I think we mentioned this in our first meeting, house training is really two things. It's not just learning where to go, but it's learning to hold it. And right now, if you have your doors open all day, if he can just come and go like with a dog door, he's learning, might be learning not to go inside, but he's not learning to hold it so that if he doesn't have immediate access, then we have a problem. So the crate is also working as a tool to um, have him practice that bladder control, utilizing that muscle. And then it's the second he goes outside, we're bringing him to the place he should go to the bathroom. So really important. I really, really want you to um, not look at it as a, a jail or a punishment. I want you to look at it as a place where he's comfortable. If you have to go out and do stuff, he is perfectly fine being in his crate during the day for probably up to two hours. So um, that's your goal over the weekend is to work on name game, to work on this little touch game with reinforcement and to work on your crating. Um, but I feel like, you know, we're going, this is just gonna be a process that we're gonna have to keep going through. And the more he's here and the more he gains confidence, we're gonna start taking these things and really expanding them out into the world. But for right now, again, baby steps, working at keeping him sub threshold is our goal. All right, so um, take care. Let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye. Good job, buddy.